Hello everyone, it's me, Hip Dips and Green Eyes. Almost everyone I know has a love for pizza, including me. The cheese, the tomato sauce, and the assortment of toppings all make pizza amazing. For this reason, I have created a recipe that takes the gluten and calories out of pizza and adds texture and flavor by using cauliflower crust. Before I start beginning the video, please like, comment, and subscribe for more. So to begin, remove the packaging from a head of cauliflower and cut it into quarters and then each quarter cut into smaller pieces. A nice tip is to make sure to remove all the leaves. As you can see, I forgot a couple, so I had to remove them as I was cutting it. But either way, once you cut them into quarters, just make them into decent sized chunks that they'll be able to blend up or mix together well in a blender. So you can either use a blender or a food processor. If you use a food processor, it's a lot easier because it will blend together nicer. But if you use a blender, you have to do it a little bit of time so you don't overwork the blender and it doesn't get clogged up. Either way, you should end up with a consistency that looks like rice and it's very um, small. So take the, this cauliflower that you just mashed and put it on a tray. So the reason I didn't put aluminum on this tray was because I didn't want it to stick. I just wanted to cook it a little bit to get um, to remove some of the water. So that's the whole entire reason I didn't put any aluminum or olive oil underneath. You're going to put this in the oven at 400 degrees for 25 minutes or until it is golden brown. Once you have done that, you can take it out of the oven and you're going to lay uh, either a cheesecloth or I just use a regular cloth because that's what I had handy. And you're going to put the cooked cauliflower that I've just put it on a put on a plate and you're going to lay it out. As you can see, I'm being very careful because I don't want this to go all over the place. So lay it out in the middle of the cloth and then you're going to want to take each end of the cloth and wrap it up to say. It's almost like you're going to be draining it now. So take it, kind of twist the top of it. And what you're going to see is that the cauliflower, since it's been cooked, there's going to be a lot of water released. So you can see that some of this water, I was expecting the water, because this is my first time actually making this recipe, um, was that the water is going to be like white. But because some of the cauliflower is um, either turned golden brown or maybe a couple pieces were burnt, the water or the excess amount of water is going to be a little bit brown. So remove as much water as possible. The more water you get out of the cauliflower, the better the consistency of the dough will be. So once I finished that, I unwrapped the towel and I laid it up with this cauliflower mixture that now has no water, which will give it a more floury kind of dough. So this is a better consistency, but as you can see, we need to add something more to get it to like a dough consistency. And I also like that when you make this kind of dough, you can add spices to the crust and it makes it taste a lot more flavorful. So I added two eggs to help bind the dough together. Then what I did for like a little bit of flavor and also a little bit, I find that this makes it taste so good, is I did a half a cup of Greek yogurt. I don't know, for some reason, when I put it in, it just, it makes it taste really, really good. So I'm happy that, um, this. then I added some spices. So I have all the list of spices that I added in the description below, along with the recipe. But basically, I just took a whole bunch of ingredients I thought would go well in this recipe and put it in a bowl. So as you can see, I mix it really well, making sure that the egg and the Greek yogurt mix well into the cauliflower. And I'm also testing out to see how much or I need of um, how much more I need to add to the dough to make it a better consistency. Because you can see it's still very wet and that's not a dough consistency. So what I do is I add a cup of oats. If you don't want to use oats, I recommend you use almond flour or another type of flour. If you want to, you can even use wheat flour, but the whole entire point is for it to be gluten free. So I would recommend almond flour or something along the lines of that. But oats also work, but I think almond flour will hold it better. Now, if you want to get your hands dirty, you can start mashing it together into a dough with your hands, which I also find was fun. I remember as a kid when I would make um, food with my mom, we would always like to get our hands dirty and it was really, really fun. 
But either way, just make sure it's a good dough consistency. And then take a pizza tray and you're going to want to spread some oil. So I just took two tablespoons of olive oil and I put it on the tray. And as you can see, I'm having fun trying to get all the olive oil out. You can all all over the tray. You can also just take like a napkin or something or a paper towel and spread it around too. But as you can see, I was having fun just moving the tray around trying to get the olive oil all over. Then you're going to take your dough and you're going to place it out. So a lot of times what people do is they take um, a rolling pin and then you can roll it out. But I didn't really want to do that because I thought I could just eye it and um, even it out. You just want to make sure that it doesn't have to be perfect, but when you do it, make sure that um, it's even, so, like there's not a whole chunk in one spot and then very little in another. But try your best. If you do want to make it more perfect, then you can definitely get the rolling pin or even like um, a very spherical cup and you can roll it out. Um, either way, you're not going to really notice much of it because as soon as you put the toppings, cheese, and tomato sauce on top, you're not going to really see much of the dough. Just make sure you try to evenly spread it around. Either way, once you finish, you should end up with something that looks like this. Now for the creative part. So as you can see, um, I'm adding cheese, I'm adding some tomatoes, some pepper, some onion, dill. But what I love about pizza is it's so versatile. You can do whatever you want on pizza. So I've also tried this recipe again, and I've put pineapple on it. And that, that was a new thing for me because I've actually never ordered pizza with pineapple. So comment if you're for or not for pizza, uh, pineapple on pizza. Um, it's not for everyone and I found that it wasn't for me because I didn't really like the sweetness and the savoriness of pizza together. But maybe some people like it. Um, either way you can add whatever you want. So I know some people love mushrooms on pizza. I'm not really for that. I also know people that just love extra cheese. So I have a really good friend that just loves cheese on pizza. But um, I love a little bit of tomato and onion. And I love that I added dill. And also parsley is good on pizza too. Also grilled chicken and grilled zucchini is really good on pizza. But for now I'm just taking the tomato sauce and I spread it. And then I take um, one cup of cheese and put it all over. So if you obviously like more cheese you could have added it but just one a cup of cheese was good enough for me because I was adding a lot of toppings to it as well try to evenly spread it around as much as possible because as soon as the cheese touches the tomato sauce um, it's a little bit harder to spread so I'm trying to spread it even though it's kind of stuck to the tomato sauce now then I took all my other ones so that has like I said dill pepper uh, cherry tomatoes and onion on it and I just I started nicely spreading it around and then as you can see in a second I'll be like I just pour it on top because I mean it's pizza it doesn't have to be perfect um, spread it evenly and it actually I love the different colors so like if you do grilled zucchini then it actually adds a nice green to it or you can even do spinach it just kind of came somewhere and spinach would look nice too and if you want, if you're a meat person, you can obviously do ground turkey or even ground beef if that's what you like. Either way, that's how it turns out. So now that you've put all your toppings and everything on your pizza, you can also put some nutritional yeast if you like that, but you're going to put it in the oven at 400 degrees for about 20 minutes. Make sure you keep an eye on it to make sure that it's not burning or anything. This is just showing how it looks in the oven. It looks so delicious and ready to eat. I can't wait for it to be ready. This is how it looks when it comes out of the oven. It looks really, really good. I can't wait to cut it. Either way, pizza is so versatile and I love it. And I really, really hope you try this recipe because it was really, really good. And I really, really enjoyed it. So please try it yourself and please like, comment, subscribe. Thank you for watching.